years ago. We're going to do a, uh, one of our presentations uh, for the uh, month of May, and it's going to be on MNANA-GAL antenna modeling software. So um, basically, um, it's a software package that we put together by 3HAMS uh, a while back. There's two versions, a free version and a pro version. Um, you can obtain the software uh, by going to the website listed here on the page. Uh, hamsoft.ca pages mna gala dash php um, the newest version is 3.0 um, and that was rolled out in 2012 um, there's a user group on yahoo and um, you may want to check that they um, i think they did some conversions recently with yahoo to io groups so uh, that link may be a little bit old but if you go out to the mna website you can pull that down um, the prof professional version has a little more features to it, but uh, it's quite expensive. Um, and if you're not uh, really doing a whole lot of heavy-duty antenna modeling, you, you want to look at the, the GAL version or the general version. Um, it's very similar to EasyNEC, if you're familiar with that. Um, uh, EasyNEC um, is another antenna modeling software. It's a lot more robust uh, a product than this, uh, this package, but um, again, it's professional use. and um, if you're going to do some really heavy duty designs where you're doing big Yagi's or uh, those kind of things then maybe you want to look at or multi-band um, Yagi's you may want to look at that. Um, the tutorials, so um, there's several good ones out there if you, if you YouTube uh, MNANA you'll, you'll find a ton of uh, videos out there. Uh, one of the best is uh, Callum McCormick M0 MCX DX Commander from uh, his channel. He has several tutorials going through it from basics to, to uh, the hard stuff. Um, I'm going to basically do some of the, the uh, entry level uh, to get you familiar with the software. Uh, we'll go run through some of the terminology, we'll run through uh, basic uh, functions and then we'll do some antenna building. So I've got some models already built and if you want to comment and send some uh, information of something you'd like to see modeled. Um, I'll see if I can do it for you tonight. Uh, it's not too difficult to build things if, once you get a little used to it, um, as long as they're not too complex and don't cause me to think too much. Um, and there's a quick start guide. Um, if you see the link there at the bottom, um, it's uh, HTTP um, GLA-ANA.DE basic MMEN, and that gives you the English version of the, uh, the user guide. Um, so it's important terminology, radiator being the radiating element, uh, radials being um, the uh, big counterpoise or uh, ground conductivity part of an antenna. Isotropic antenna, you're going to hear me talk about uh, dB gain tonight, and isotropic antennas when, are perfect radiators in space. So there's no loss in the antenna and it's going to give you an omnidirectional pattern in a sphere uh, uh, with perfect unity gain. So when you hear somebody say DBI, they're talking about in comparisons to a uh, isotropic antenna, how much gain more than a unity gain isotropic antenna. So that's going to be important. Um, I think Cal Callum uses the term bananas. Uh, so um, when he's talking about DB gain, so he'll say, you know, five bananas more than a vertical. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a way to, to measure uh, something against another. Uh, decibels uh, is the intensity of the RF field. Uh, parasitic array, so if we get into arrays tonight, um, that's where you have an, a driven element and then you have other elements that are coupled with it, usually typically a radiator and a standard parasitic array where you have a driven element forward and a radiator behind it slightly longer in the antenna and it forces the RF from, um, that's radiating off the back of that um, radiator and forces it back forward uh, so actually you're squeezing the bubble and making it go in the direction you want it to go um, antenna gain again that's what we're talking about is how much over an isotropic or in other antenna that you have uh, how much more gain so how much rf are you getting in a certain direction 
than you are off of a, a standard antenna that you're comparing to. Now that being said, with gain, you have to give up something somewhere to get gain somewhere else. So you can't make something out of nothing. So when you talk about gain, if you talk about a vertical antenna or an isotropic antenna that's radiating out in a unidirectional pattern, in order to get gain, you change that pattern and you force the RF that was coming from one direction into another direction and you force it out um, in that direction you want it to go. So basically you're effectively squeezing that envelope or that bubble of RF and forcing it forward in the direction you want. So that's how you get gain. You're putting more power in certain areas and taking away from other areas. So it's the law, law of uh, conservation of energy in physics. Um, you can't make something out of nothing, basically. Uh, angle of radiation, that's basically what you're talking about, your takeoff angle. Um, so, you know, the lower the takeoff angle, the longer to skip, uh, the shorter to takeoff angle, the shorter to skip. So when you start talking about uh, chasing DX, your 20 dB, or 20, I'm sorry, 20 degrees of launch angle and lower um, to get those long skips. And when you're talking about NVES, which I did a presentation not too long ago on NVES antennas, we're radiating straight up so we have a very high takeoff angle, somewhere near 90 degrees that causes the atmosphere to skip to go straight up and straight back down. Um, and then front to back rejection, when you start to talk about um, directional antennas, um, then you're talking about how much difference there is on the receive side um, where you want the signal to come from versus the back side of the antenna where you don't want signal coming in. So you can basically take out offending signals because if you use an omnidirectional antenna, you're going to get... Um, signal received from all over the place and you won't be able to to design, you know to, to differentiate a front from a backside signal where if you use a, a directional antenna you'll have you'll receive more on the front side of the antenna and less on the back side of the antenna so it takes some of those um, offending signals down and then directivity which is the um, ratio of transmitted power between the front and the rear of the antenna uh, again basically similar to, to uh, front to back rejection but you're talking about um, your transmit power versus your receive. Uh, so uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about are, are going to be because the software uses meters and not feet. Um, you know, us being uh, in the U.S. and using the imperial system, um, we're going to make life a little easy tonight. So one foot is 0 .30, uh, 0.305 meters. One meter is 3.28 feet. Ten feet. 3.05 meters and 10 meters is 32.8 feet. Um, and we use American wire gauge here in the States uh, and everybody else in the world, they use uh, radius in millimeters. So a 13 gauge wire equals 0.99 millimeters in radius. 14 is 0 0.8, 0 0.6. As you can see, is the smaller your wire gauge, the smaller the radius of that wire is gonna be. So if you keep these things in mind when we're talking about it and when you're using the software, and you want to build an antenna and you're going to use 14 gauge wire for your antenna then you know you're using 0.8 millimeter to model it. Um, if you're using 18 gauge wire then you're going to look at 0.5 millimeters uh, in radius to uh, model it. Okay. Uh, the other thing is when we talk about the modeling software if you're using anything with ground radials um, or even if you're not using ground radials but using real ground to choice in the software you want to know what kind of ground you're on, okay? And that's going to tell you the dielectric constant, and that's, for lack of better terms, it's the capacity in the ground. Um, it tells you how much energy the ground can store. And then conductivity is how much energy it can conduct. And um, the dielectric constant is determined by the soil type. Um, there's a lot of factors go into it, and we can get really deep and ugly into that. And, um, probably not necessary for this discussion, but conductivity um, is another thing. So, um, good ground good ground conductivity leads to good aerials and good um, good transmission. So, seawater um, or near the seawater is usually the best place for um, antennas to work, especially uh, ground-mounted verticals. Uh, because you have so much conductivity with the with the soil and the in the uh, salt water nearby, so um, when you're looking at a dielectric constant, there is about 81, which is very high, and the um, conductivity is 
4,000 millisiemens per meter, so four siemens in conductivity per square meter of, of ground. Um, fresh water, you have the same dielectric and store a lot of capacity, but it doesn't have the same transmission or uh, energy passing uh, type um, capacity that salt water does, and it's basically because water tends to be, fresh water tends to be more of an insulator than salt water. Um, wet ground, and that's what I would consider the area we live in here in South Carolina, whether it's the upstate or the Midlands. Um, uh, I did some research, and what I use for my models here, because we have clay soil that retains a lot of water in, in the aquifers, uh, being we're in relative proximity to the coast, the aquifers are relatively shallow here. Um, we're dielectric constants about 15, and the conductivity of the soil is about five, five millisiemens per meter. And then when you get the dry ground, um, say you go up in the mountains, it's going to go down a little bit. And then sandy ground like you have down uh, in the sand hills, um, again, it, that dielectric changes. And in an urban area where you don't have a lot of uh, soil and you're dealing with asphalt and those kind of things, you're looking at less conductivity. And then, of course, when you get out into the desert, um, silica and um, dry air and all of that uh, does not lend a good conductivity. So we'll, we'll just know these things, and, and that's how you set up your ground on, on the um, system, and we'll take a look at that here shortly. Um, and then we're gonna, I'm going to go through the vertical antenna because that's where I'm going to start is on building a vertical antenna. Uh, so what we'll look at is a vertical, uh, quarter-wave vertical with, with radials. Um, the imperial formula to get your, your height in or your wave, uh, your length of your radiator in feet is 234 times the uh, divided by the frequency you want to use. So if you were using like 40 meters, say 7.15 uh, megahertz, times the velocity factor of the wire. Now, if you're using uninsulated copper wire, the velocity factor is 1. So you don't, you don't have to take that in consideration. But when you use insulated wire, um, because the insulation interacts with the wire itself and the eddy currents along, that are flowing along the wire, um, you have to compensate for that. So um, you have to use a velocity factor. And typically, um, with that, the velocity factor is um, of insulated wire between 0.93 and 0.95. And if you use either one of those figures, it's negligible. Um, the metric formula is 0.71 um, divided by the frequency times the velocity factor again. Um, and then the radials can be built any length, okay? So it really doesn't matter um, the individual lengths of the radiators. Now, the closer you can get to a quarter wavelength, the better off you are. Uh, but you want a minimum of two wavelengths. So if you're on 40 meters, you want 80 meters of radials down. Um, for that at a minimum. Uh, when you get, when you start to go past that, at a certain point, you get to diminishing returns. So usually they say 16 radials um, is really good. Once you get past 16, the curve of gain um, or benefit you get from there um, really is not worth the effort of putting down more radials. Now, if you're a commercial radio station and you're paying for all the power you're putting into that antenna, uh, yeah, you want to tweak out, you know, 360 radials every one degree of uh, circumference around your antenna, sure, all day long, because uh, every little bit more power you can get out, you're paying for it, you want to get, you want to eke that out. Um, and then some quick tools down there at the bottom, those will show you some really quick um, places to do your formula division, they'll do all the work for you, basically, instead of you doing the math on a piece of scratch paper. Um, so the other one is a dipole antenna and it's usually half wave, center fed or off center fed. Uh, the imperial formula, 492 uh, frequency, velocity factor of the wire, um, and that gives you the overall length of the antenna. So that's not just one side, that's the overall length. Um, and if you use a 0.95 uh, velocity factor, that actually comes out, you hear the formula, 468 divided by the frequency. And that's what everybody uses because that's taking in the, the um, consideration of uh, the velocity factor of 0.95. Um, and if you're using metric, it's 150 um, or um, uh, 142.5 if you're using the compensated for velocity factor. Um, and then if you want to find out what each side of that dipole is, then you take that length, the overall length divided by two, and it gives you it. 
Um, for an off-center fed, you're going to look at feeding it 0.33 or one-third of a way into that antenna. So if you were using a 145-foot uh, off-center fed dipole, you'd want to feed it at, um, uh, what is it, 45 feet and then 90 feet on the other side of it. So, and that gives you a characteristic impedance of about 200 ohms, so you'd want to use a four to one bout. All that being said, uh, we can take a look now at um, the software itself. And I'm going to reduce this and bring the package up. Okay, so this is the MNNA tool, okay? And what you're seeing here um, is basically the space that you're using to draw the antenna, okay? You have your z-axis going up here in green. You have your red axis in, in x-axis in red and y-axis in blue. So it's a three-dimensional pattern. Um, you can do this in mul multiple ways. So if I look at the geometry, I can go in here and tell the computer or the software where I want the wires to be. So you're going to put in wires or elements, um, and this will handle up to, I think, uh, for a specific antenna, probably about 200 elements. Um, but if you're building something that complex, and you can, um, when you start getting into multi-band Yagi antennas, it can get really complex. But if I wanted to just say, for lack of better terms, uh, at, at the X zero, which would be the X axis zero point and the Y axis zero point, uh, let me see, hang on one second, I'm sorry, I'm putting that in wrong. Zero, tab, okay, so I'm gonna build an element at the, at the X, Y coordinates of zero. My starting point is gonna be zero, which is the Z axis, so I'm starting at the dead center of that, those three axes. I'm gonna leave that because I'm gonna do a vertical piece, and I'm gonna make this 9.97 meters, okay? I'm gonna use my radius for my wire is gonna be 0.8, so that's gonna be about a 16 gauge wire. And the segment piece, don't worry about that. That's going to be in the more advanced section. So just leave it at negative one. And once I hit that and tab out of that, then I can go back to view. And you'll see it's built a wire there for me along that Z axis that's um, 9.97 meters tall. Okay. Now, you can come down here. And we're going to talk about a source. So that's where you're going to connect your coax. So at this particular one, I want to feed that one at ground level. So it's going to be wire one, and I'm going to feed it at the base. Okay. Um, the voltage, I'm going to use one volt, and I'm not going to change the phasing on this. So I'm not taking any degrees of phase out of this. So this is just a straight piece of coax to the bottom of this antenna. Okay. So now you see the little red dot down here. That's your source point. So I'm feeding this thing at ground level. I've got a 9.97 meter wire going vertically, okay, supported by some non-metallic structure, whether it be a string to a tree limb or a, a fiberglass mast, whatever that may be, okay? Um, so if we know that we're using something like 9.97 meters and we want a quarter way vertical, that tends to be about the 40 meter band. So we'll go down here and this is the, <coughs> excuse me, this is the calculate section of the software. And this is where you're going to put in what frequency you want to run this at. You're going to build your ground we talked about. So we can go down here, you can do free space, which gives you, you know, basically no ground plane whatsoever. It's just free space perfect ground being that it's going to be pretty much as close to seawater as it can be. And then real ground, which is what I would use for around here. So we go in the ground setup tab and here's those things we talked about, the dielectric, the conductivity. Um, so if we go for around here, the dielectric around here is about 15. Um, the uh, the millisiemens per meter was five, okay? Um, we don't have to worry about radius because we're not working there, okay? And the height above ground is zero. So we also talked about radials. This is where you fill in your radial field. So I can fill in the number of radials I want and what size wire I'm gonna build them. So if I build them the same size 
as I am the antenna, which is um, 14 gauge wire or 0.8 millimeters. Okay, so now my ground is built. Okay, and now it's put radials in the ground um, through the software to allow us to um, build the ground field. Okay, the material we're going to use for this is going to be copper wire, and we've already specified that we're going to use 0.8 millimeter copper wire. Okay. We're not going to put any additional height here because this is a ground mounted vertical. Okay. So now I can hit the start, but I want to change my frequency here to 40 meter band. So I'm going to be about midway in the 40 meter band. Okay. So it's giving me the frequency of 7.15. It's giving me the resistance of 34.26 ohms. I'm getting a reactivity of negative 19. Um, and that's going to be in capacitance. And then my SWR is 1.8 for this antenna. So fairly close to, you know, serviceable. Um, and then this is going to give your gain DBI. So that's the maximum amount of gain I'm going to see on the antenna. Uh, so right now I'm looking at 3.1 dB uh, of gain. And, you'll, and you're sitting here going, well, it's a vertical. It's, a, it's going in omnidirectional. How can you have gain? You'll see when I show you the, the pattern for the antenna why we have gain. The elevation is telling you um, where the launch angle is. So that's going to tell you uh, where that maximum gain is uh, relative to the angle, takeoff angle of the antenna. The front to back, being it's a vertical, it's omnidirectional. So there's no front to back rejection here at all. We're over real ground, zero height, and all the Polarization is going to be vertical on this antenna. Okay, so if we want to see what this antenna looks like when it's radiating, we come up here to far field plots, and that shows us our radiation. Now this is a bird's eye view of that antenna, what the radiating pattern looks like. So here in the center would be our antenna, and you have that big circle of RF out. Okay, this view here which is the elevation view, basically slices this circle along this x-axis, okay? So if I take, take that, we can take that out there. So it's basically the same way now. So you have your x-axis here, so it's basically slicing this and you're looking at it head on, okay? And you see these two big lobes, okay? When I said we have some gain, it's because it's not a spherical, um, radiating pattern it's omnidirectional but we're not radiating a sphere we have kind of a donut shape here so all that rf that would be going off the top has got squeezed down and pushed out the sides okay so now instead of a, a circle we've taken it and squeezed the donut where that rf has to go somewhere so it pushes out the side more okay so if you take a look here you can see as i'm going around the circle here okay you'll see the D, the gain is always 1.3, okay? And it's, the azimuth angle is telling you where you're going along a horizontal plane. So azimuth is this way, elevation is up and down, okay? So at 90 degrees straight, you know, on the y-axis, y um, if this was a compass and we made the x positive side of the x north, we'd be on the western side of the antenna. We're seeing 1.3 dB of gain. Okay, now that tells us this half the story. Okay, this side tells us where that gain is at. Okay, so down here we're talking about an elevation of zero degrees. Okay, so I'm here on the ground flat, and as I climb up this thing, you'll see the gain increases, right? So down here at the bottom, it's negative 42.7. And then as I climb up, I start to gain, and now I'm up here at 1.3, and that's at 24 degrees of elevation, if you see that right here, elevation angle 24 degrees. So that's where my maximum gain is. And if you look down here, you'll, you'll see those same figures. Gain 1.32 dB, vertical polarization, gives us our frequency, and it gives us our um, SWR, our impedance, characteristic impedance, and it tells us where our elevation is for the for the actual best gain okay 
we can change that elevation and we can look at this antenna at a different elevation so we can look at the pattern here as is represented here along the um, elevation. So for DX, we know that's sub 20 degrees. So let's look at it 10 degrees of elevation. So we'll make that 10. And that circle got smaller. And why did it get smaller? Because we're down here on this curve and that curve starts to bring back in um, towards less gain. So now we're looking at negative 1.4 dB. Okay? So it's not a negative per se gain, it's, it's a negative against an isotropic perfect radiator. So if you had a unity gain isotropic radiator at uh, zero dB of gain, this is going to have less gain than that would be. Okay? So you're, there's some loss, and that's because that RF is pushed out at 26 degrees. There's a more RF going out than there is going in. So you have to take it from somewhere, and that's where it comes from. So basically, that lower that takeoff angle, the more that curve on this side comes back towards zero, okay? Um, or an, an infinite loss of, of RF. You can also look at the pattern in 3D, and this is basically takes that plan view here, the in, and then the elevation view, and makes it a three-dimensional view. Okay, so now you can actually see that bubble I was talking about in three dimensions. Okay, so in where it was isotropic, it would be a complete sphere, perfect sphere. Because we're squeezing this thing, you can see why there's gain in certain directions because we're taking it off the top and pushing it out the side, if that makes sense. Okay? You can also look at the, the radiation, whether it's vertical or horizontal, by using these buttons. That's the vertical component and then your horizontal component. There's no horizontal radiation at all on this. It's all vertical. So you look at it here, and then you can look at the total between the two, and it would come up in two different colors. Okay. Now, we can also do this manually. You don't have to sit here and try to figure out what you want to put in and use the XY coordinates. You can go to view and then you can use this little button here which is wire edit. Okay. So I can come in here and let me pull this out just a little bit and make a little bit bigger. I can come in here and this gives us our 3D projection we can look at the XY, which would be the horizontal. We can look at XZ, which would be part of the horizontal and a vertical, or the YZ, which is also the other side of that, plus the vertical, okay? So if we wanted to draw this in a vertical, then we would use one of the vertical components. So we would use either XZ or YZ to give us the field we want to draw in, because we're going to draw in two dimensions and render in three dimensions. Okay, so if I pull this in X and Y, okay, you can see it's along that X axis, zero and zero up here. And then the Z, which is the vertical component, I have one point at zero and one point at 9.97. Okay, so that gives us that. And if I wanted to redraw that, I could take, an, I can take the pencil here and I can come over here and I can actually start here and go up and I'm drawing that same line along there just a different point along the axis and now if I go back to the 3D view and you can see where that second line is that I just drew in okay so you can do this freehand and draw it in and sometimes it's easier to do it that way sometimes it's easier to draw it to uh, if you know what you're looking for and you've got experience with it just to go into the geometry and build it out of the geometry that being said, you can come back to that YZ and we can actually take it, modify the wire, and we can delete that wire if we wanted to. Okay? And that takes it out, but it leaves our other wire there. Okay? The other cool thing with this is when I get out of this and I'm back to here, if I want to change the source, once I drew it, when you're in view form, you can come back here and you can modify or add source. So if you just draw your line in and I wanted to add a source, then I can come here, I can add it in the center of the wire, the beginning of the wire, or the end of the wire. Now, why they say not recommended, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I want to put the source where I want to put the source. If this is a vertical, 
then I want that source close to the ground or, or at the bottom of the antenna. So I, I've, I've never figured out why they put in there not recommended, but it is what it is. So that's basically how you build a vertical with this. Now some of the cool things we can look at is um, if we do a calculate again at 7.15, we'll run this one more time, and we have the SWR at 1.8, okay? We can go over here to the plots button and we're seeing the far field plot, which was what we were looking at. Um, we can look at an SWR plot. We can choose how wide we want that bandwidth. So we take the center of the frequency, which would be 7.15. And if we have a bandwidth of 120, we're looking 60 kilohertz this way and 60 kilohertz that way to the positive and negative. Um, we can make it wider and we can make it 400 and say, okay, we're going to look at 200 kilohertz this way and 200 kilohertz that way, which basically covers the entire 40 meter band. So we can come here, hit the SWR and detailed, and that's going to give us our SWR plot. So it's just like an antenna analyzer, but you know, theoretical, okay? We're doing this in, in, in space. So as you can see, we were set at 175 or 715 here. Our SWR was, you know, 1.8. Well, it's a little bit better towards the higher side of the band, okay? So that means the antenna is a little bit short for 715. We can actually do a little better so we can add some length to the antenna. If we want to find out where the antenna is resonant at, where basically it's purely, and uh, the definition of, of resonance is where the antenna has no reactance to it. So it's purely a resistive load. Um, best would be 50 ohms, purely resistive with no reactance one way or the other, okay? So we can look at the resonance here, and we're going to look at it. Again, we had that bandwidth. Let me change this bandwidth to 400 again and run resonance. Okay. So we see it's actually the best resonance we can come up with with the resistive um, component being um, close to 50 ohms is 7319. Well, that's not exactly where we want this antenna. It's out of the band a little bit. So if we want that to be our center, we can come back in here and let's see. Let me see if I remember how to do this. Um, back in here and put this at 7.319 and we can start it. Okay, and that gives us, see the, the reactance is almost zero now. We still have not quite a, a 50 ohm load, but a lot better. And our gain, we gave up a little bit of gain, uh, but we have a much more efficient antenna. So we're gonna put a little more power out. Um, and we can go in and, oh, how do we do that? It's not optimization, is it? Yes, it's optimization. Uh, we wanna optimize it for SWR and wire, okay. And let me not do this because I'm going to screw that up. Okay. But that tells you we're a little bit short, so we can go in and add. Um, there's a way to scale this thing. Here's wire scale. This is what I want. Frequency, I want it for 715. And now I can go and calculate. Oops, that didn't work. Hang on, I'm sorry. Let me change that back up. I need to go to optimize wire scale. I need to go back to 7.319. Okay, and start. Oh, I've done something really wrong here. Bear with me a second here, my apologies. I got myself sideways here. What's my length on this antenna? Geometry. Oh, that's why it went double the length. All right, so we want to go back to 9.97. Enter. Okay. And now we go back and calculate that. And calculate. All right, much better. Okay. Wire scale 7.319. Calculate. Okay. 
And now go back to 7.150 and hit start. Okay. So we can see the antenna is a little short. We can add some length to it. So we go back out to the, to the geometry and let's make it 10.02 and see where we come up with now. Uh, tab and view, calculate, and run it again. And now we're down to 1.36. Okay. So we're almost perfect on, on the reactants here. So we're getting pretty close. That's about as good as we're going to get it. Okay. So that's basically a vertical in a nutshell with this. Um, so if anybody has any questions about verticals, just go ahead and pop them into the chat and I'll take a look at it and see if I have it. Um, we can talk about dipoles. Dipoles, a different setup completely. So let me clear this and go to new. And um, file new. Okay. Geometry. Okay. So when we're doing dipoles, again, you're looking at, let's say, 20 meter dipole. Okay. So 20 meter dipole, we're going to go in here and we're going to edit wire and let's go to X, Y, okay, um, and we'll do an inverted V. Um, so let's start here at about 10 meters off the ground and we're going to draw in, let's see, uh, 10 meter or 20 meter dipole. Uh, so half wavelengths be 10 meters. We want to come down about five meters here. Um, we'll draw one wire there, one wire here, and we can take a look at the lengths. So the length on that wire uh, length on that wire is seven meters. That's a little bit long. So let's take it up and do this to about five meters pretty close there and that's pretty close there okay so there's our dipole okay now we can take a look at this in 3d and you can see there's your dipole Hit okay and we're at the XY oops I did that wrong <laughs> I drew it flat and we need to do it vertical all right, so go back to view, wire edit. My apologies. Um, let's take this and go back here to here, and we'll delete this. Uh, delete wire and delete wire. I can't believe I just did that. I knew better. Okay, X, so we want a ZX component. My apologies. Boy, that was just lovely, wasn't it? All right, so let's go up here to about five meters and we're going to draw a wire in okay. draw a wire in and we want it to be about there and draw a wire in here we're going to bring it down to about here and my length is three meters so I need to come a little bit further so we'll bring it down here a little bit further That's pretty close there. And we'll move this one out. So we're pretty close there. All right, so now we can look at this in 3D. And gee, yeah, isn't that great? Now we're back to a vertical component, inverted V. We have a pretty good angle here, probably about 130, 135 degrees. Okay? So now we're going to add a source to this thing. Let me get this back up here. We're going to add a source. Um, add a source to beginning of wire. And we've got the source there. So now we can come back here to calculate. Now, ground setup. We don't have any radials, so we need to check off this. We're going to leave the ground setup the same because we're going to have some re reflectivity off the ground. But we don't have any radials down, so we don't want this thing calculating with there's a radial fill down there. If you left it down there, my guess is we'd have a lot of uh, uh, vertical uh, radiation angle. Um, and it would look very much like an NVES. Okay, so um, we know the antenna by looking at the view and the geometry. 
where, where I've got it right now, we're about three meters off the ground. So the difference between the ends of the antenna, about three meters. So we want, for a 20 meter antenna, we want a quarter wavelength or better. So a uh, quarter wavelength is five meters. We're at three already. So let's go ahead and calculate an additional two meters in height. Okay. And we're going to be at 1450. We can run it. And our SWR is 2.0. My guess is we're probably a little bit short for the antenna, but we'll take a look at the plot. Come down here. We'll look at SWR. We'll look at 400 bandwidth. We'll do a detailed plot. And yeah, we're a little short. Okay. So we're here at 715 at 20, and it's actually getting better down here. And if I put this out a little bit further, um, we can, let's go up to 1,000 and run a detailed SWR. And it's actually resonant about 4.1, 14.4. So we know we have to lengthen this antenna a little bit. So we'll go back out to view, wire edit, and we'll go back to our component here. We'll leave it here and edit this out and go ahead and drag this down just a little bit to give a little more length. And I'm probably going to be a little long, but we'll take a look at it here. Okay. Okay. And now let's go ahead and calculate. Oops, went too far. Let's look at the plots again. Um, detailed SWR. Yeah, I made it way too long. Now it's at 12, so uh, it doesn't take much uh, to uh, make a big change in an antenna like this. So let's scale this back to 5.2. There we go. Okay. That should be a little bit closer. should be a lot closer. Calculate. So 3.19, not quite. Let's see where we're at plot-wise. SWR, detailed. Yeah, still a bit long. Okay. Uh, but while we're here, let's look at the field plots. Okay. So um, as you can see from the view, this thing is running on the x-axis. Okay. When we look at the far field plots, here's the x-axis. So it's broadside antenna, right? So where you have your antenna running this way, the radiation pattern is coming here, not off the ends, but off that wide face. Now, since we're so close to the ground, you can see the elevation angles are very high where your gain's at, okay? If we look at the uh, 3D plot, you'll see it looks kind of like a peanut, okay? If we go up, in uh, height and say let's add let's put this at 10 meters now an additional height and start the calculation and look at the far field plot um, you're starting to get well it's almost omnidirectional isn't it wow you got a lot of uh, vertical but you're taking taking it out to the sides here okay uh, let's take that back down to five Start. Okay. And we can look at our far field plot. Yeah. Okay. So that flattened out that bubble. That's what we were looking for. So now we're seeing um, gain of 3.73 dB at 60 degrees. And if we come down to the elevation, if we want dx, let's say 20 degrees, um, you can see that nice peanut shape now. And our um, dB is 4.7 dB a gain against an isotropic off, off the broad side of that antenna. Okay, so that gives you, and if you look at the 3D plot, there you go. Nice big bubble RF, pretty low angle of radiation, so it's going to get you out pretty well. So, um, any questions about dipoles? Now, we can look at some other things. I've got some antennas that are built here um, that uh, you may want to take a look at. So um, if we take a look at, let's say, uh, two-element vertical, 
Okay, we had we built a one element vertical. Now we're going to look at a two element vertical. And uh, let's go over to the view. Actually, this is a three element vertical. Hmm. I had labeled wrong. So what we have here is we've got the radiating antenna, okay, a radiator. You've got a reflector, which is slightly longer, and you've got a director, which is slightly shorter, okay? So basically, you want to look at the ratio of your radiator and your director and your, and your reflector. Um, so you want one resonant where your... Um, your radiator is resonant where you want your free center of your frequency, and then your um, reflector is going to be about 10% longer, and your director is going to be about 10% um, shorter. So basically, you're taking that RF and you're going to push it in one direction, and you, so you're going to take all of it and direct it where you want it to go. So if we look at it and say, now we go to the geometry, you can see how it's built. It's about a quarter wavelength between each of the elements, the director, the radiator, and the, the reflector. So you've got about a quarter wavelength between all of them. We're building this out of wire. So basically we'd have maybe three masts with um, number 14 wire going in each of the masts and our radial field underneath. Uh, so when we go to calculate, and this is going to be, what's the geometry on that? So it's going to be a 20 meter antenna. You can see the um, the driven element, which is element one, is 5.08 meters tall. Your, um, reflector, your reflector, which is the back element, longer, 5.3, and your shorter element um, is your director. That's the upfront element. That's where the RF is going to go, um, is at 4.8 meters. Okay. So if we go to calculate um, this for, um, we're going to have an SWR 1.96, so my guess is the antenna is just a little bit short. Um, but um, we could take a look at the far field plot. Now, we're talking about RF and gain, okay? Uh, we'll go back to the calculate. We got 4.18 dB of gain, okay, with this antenna at about 23 degrees of angle. So it's going to be fairly good DX antenna. Um, could be a little better, but, you know, not too bad. Uh, let me pick the ground. Well, I know why. All right, got to put the, got to put the radials back on. Now let's calculate it again. Okay. That's much better. Uh, the gain is up 6.48 dB a gain. Okay. So, and it's at 23 degrees. So, again, still pretty good angle. So, when you talk about dB a gain against isotropic, as we all know, 3 dB a gain is doubling your effective power. Okay. So, if I've got a 100 watt radio and I pump that 100 watts and I Disregard any loss in the coax, because you can have some loss, but let's just talk about easy numbers, so 100, 100 watts. So let's say I put out 100 watts from the radio directly to the antenna, um, and I'm radiating that 100 watts at 0 dB gain. Now I've got 6.48, so every 3 dB gain doubling my power. So I go from 100 watts to 200 watts at 3 dB gain. At 6 dB gain, now I'm at 400 watts of radiating power plus a little bit because we got 0.48, so, you know, say 410, 420 watts without any loss in the coax. So you just made your 100-watt radio sound like a 400-watt radio. Now, that being said, that 400-watt radio sounds really good right here, but on the back side of this thing, you see the dB goes down by 4.6 dB again. So everything you gain on the front side, you took from this area back here on the back side of the antenna, so the reflector side of that antenna. So that's why I was talking about the law of conservation of energy. You got to, just to get gain in one direction, you got to give it from somewhere else. But when you look at this, um, so when we had the isotropic radiator, or the, I'm sorry, the, the standard vertical with the donut radiation pattern all direct, all direct around, we had 1.3 um, or 1.23 uh, dB of gain. We're at negative 4.6, okay, on the back side of this thing. So we went from 1.32 to negative 4.6. So now we're down almost 6 dB of gain. So your antenna on this side of it is a, is a lot worse than just that standard one element. 
But on this side where you've got a pointed, say you were wanting to work Europe, say you want to put it from here 35 degrees, that thing's going to be singing into Europe. Now everybody on the back side going to you, Mexico and those areas, they're not going to hear you. So um, you're going to be very weak down there. That, that's the directivity of the antenna, okay? Now the front to back rejection on the antenna um, on this one in particular is 11.1 11 or 11.12 dB of uh, front to back ratio. So up here the signals are going to sound 11 dB louder than they do back here. Okay, so you're going to hear a lot better on this antenna from this front direction than you will off the back. So all the offending signals, if you're trying to work Europe and you've got a bunch of guys coming in off the back side of you, um, you're, they're not going to be overrunning the guys that are coming in for Europe or wherever you have this antenna pointed. Okay, so whatever's opposite, you're not going to hear them as well. Now, it's got a pretty wide beam width, um, so I always like to look at antennas as where I get, where my gain is in half from max gain. So if I have 6.5 dB here, going, um, let's say the y-axis is north, so due, due west. I'm going to look at this and as I scale around this, I'm going to look for it to go to 3.4, which is actually at about 129 degrees. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to look, so I've got 129 degrees there, i got 180 degrees here, so 129 minus 180 is 71 degrees, okay? So it's 71 there, and I got 71 here. So now I've got 140 degrees, 142 degrees of beam width. So, you know, a semicircle is 180, so I'm not quite at a semicircle. I'm a little narrower than that. But that's where you're going to have at least 3 dB a gain. So that 100 watt radio in that 140 degree slice of the earth or the atmosphere is going to be a 200 watt radio to a 400 watt radio depending where you're at okay if that makes sense okay um, again on the back side you're gonna lose it but if we look at the elevation um, that was at 23 degrees let's go down to 10 degrees for DX okay for long distance DX 5 to 10 degrees those are your 5,000 mile skips you know those are those are the kind of radiation angle you want for on poor days for um, let's say, um, you know, Australia, those long, long haul DX contacts, okay? Um, you're still at 4.1 dB again, so that radio is still going to be louder than 200 watt, or 100 watt radio. It's going to be about 200 watt radio, 210, 230, somewhere in that neighborhood watt radio. Your beam width stays about the same, so I've got 4.1. 1.1, yeah, right at the same. So that slice doesn't change. So you've got that 40, 40 degree or 140 degree slice that you're going through um, for that. And if I look at that in 3D, again, you can see it better in 3D of your radiation angle and where you're taking that RF off the backside of here and pushing it forward. Okay. So. And again, we can, you know, you can play with a bunch of different antennas. Uh, this thing is a really powerful piece of software. Um, if you take a look at, um, let's open this up and let's look at something else that's uh, maybe a loop uh, antenna. So, 40 meter horizontal loop. Okay. Um, let's look at the view. So, here's a loop, 40 meter loop built on the ground. Um, geometry, um, yeah, basically a quarter wavelength or, or third of wavelength on each side, so it's a full full wave loop. Uh, the impedance, usually on something like this, the characteristic impedance is going to be about 200 ohms, um, depending on how you do do it. Right, you can you can get a characteristic impedance of 125 ohms and use a two and a half to one to balance, or you can use a four to one balance. So in order to compensate for the balance, um, you have to go in and massage the software a little bit, okay? So there's a tab up here that says Setup. And when you go to the Setup tab, um, you'll see this resistance here. And this is what it's going to calculate the SWR for. Whatever you tell it is what your resistance is or your 
characteristic of peds of that antenna is going to be. So, <coughs> excuse me, this one I've got <coughs> set for 100, <coughs> excuse me, 125 ohms. So, uh, this, this antenna is probably very similar to a 40 meter bloop I have at my house, which is uh, fed with a two and a half to one ballon. So we, we'll leave it there because that's the way it's set up. We go to calculate and we'll look at 14 or 20 meters um, because most of your um, loops, full wave loops are resonant on every harmonic. So they're built for 40, they'll resonate on 20, they'll resonate on 15, they'll resonate on 10, and they should be good on six as well in certain portions of the band. They're also possibly tunable on 80 uh, for a 40 because you're going up um, half a harmonic or your, your A40 is one harmonic of 80. So somewhere in that band, it's probably tunable using an internal tuner on your radio. My guess is it's probably a very narrow, so you would want to have a wide brand tuner. If you build an 80 meter loop, which is going to be almost double the wire, you're going to be looking at, again, the harmonics 40, 15, 10, and of course with a wide range tuner 17 15 all the work bands come in there as well okay but let's look at 20 meters i'll do this and the characteristic ooh, that swr is way off something is not right with this antenna um let's look at the plots here and see where this bad boy is resonant um swr 400 detail Okay, it's calculating out now. Takes a little bit of time when you're doing something this large. Um, this many plots, oh, it's way, way off. Okay, let's look at 40 meters real quick and see what we look like there. Oh, yeah, I have the radials turned on. No, thank you. <laughs> Let me go back down here to ground setup. Take the radials off now. That probably might make a difference. Um, let's leave it at 14, uh, 14, 150. Let's take a look now. Eh, it didn't change much on the SWR. Okay, let's look at, uh, let's look at it here. Okay, it's a little better at 40. Um, obviously the antenna is not quite the right size. Um, but uh, if we look at the plots, let's see where this bad boy's resonant at. It's resonant at seven nine, so it's a little bit uh, a little bit long. Uh, we can cut it down a little bit, um, but but what's interesting is the um, we're locked up here some for some reason. I don't know why I'm locked up. Okay, uh, we can look at the far field plot. Okay, so on forty, this antenna is it's being fed along the x-axis here okay if we look at the far field plot you can see it's being fed here so you got more gain on that back side of it opposite the feed point so you're going to get a little more gain there the pattern is interesting um, if you take the elevation down to let's say 10 degrees for that long haul dx um, you're still looking at, you know, 3 dB a gain, or negative 3 dB a gain, but you're better than a standard vertical, which at 10, deg 10 degrees, you're at negative, um, negative 5 or so dB a gain, so you're still a little better, okay? Um, but we go up, and we, if we do the calculation at uh, 20 meters and run it, Okay, so our far field plot gets a little different, okay? So now we're starting to star out a little bit in the overhead, and you can see we've got some funky lobes going along here. And if you look at the plot for 3D, you can see how interesting that is. We've got some really high gain areas at Enves, but we've got some really low angle high gain as well, okay? So 
this antenna is going to be better at DX on 20 meters than it is on 40, even though it's characteristically built for a 40 meter. Okay. When things really get interesting, and, and I can speak to personal experience on this, is we put up a, an 80 meter full wave loop for field day, and the higher the frequency you go, and the further away you go from the, harm, the, the base frequency and harmonics, the wilder that pattern gets and the more it starts to look like a clock face and the more crazy low gain you get. So if we take this thing and now run it at 15 um, meters, okay? So we'll take it down to 21200 and start it. And it's given us the plot. I don't know, we don't want the plot, we want the far field plot. Okay, so you can see how that thing's pancaking out and we're getting these crazy lobes. Now watch when you see this, okay? Look at that. Look at that monster gain opposite the feed point here, right? And that's gonna be at about, what, uh, 41 degrees. So that's inside continental US, Canada, Mexico, North America basically first skip, um, but your gain is 4.3 dB a gain, okay? So you're looking some craziness there. I mean, you're gonna have to be loud. We ran this thing on field day and the, the way the antenna was pointed, we had some lobes going up the East Coast. We were the loudest thing on the East Coast with a 100 watt radio. We worked, I worked 140 stations in about an hour and Darcy came, k 4 dqp came in right behind me and worked like 137 the next hour. I mean, we made, almost 300 contacts like that on 15 meters in a matter of two hours when the band opened and we had we had the right antenna at the right time and the right and aimed in the right direction now if we really want to get crazy we can look at um, look at this thing at 10 meters and that's where it really kind of um, will be it'll take a little bit for the computer to figure out the um, the calculations and don't worry about the SWR. I mean, that's fixable. It's just tuning the antenna, right? Um, so as soon as this thing catches up to me here. Uh, come on. No, that's not what I want. I want 28. Uh, computer's not liking all these window tabs open. 28. Come on. Well, is it going to cooperate or not? I don't know if it wants to cooperate or not. 28200, okay. I guess it just didn't hold my tongue right. <laughs> Who knows? All right, so let's go ahead and calculate this thing. And start. Come on. Boy, it's really just struggling here for some reason. But I don't know why it's we're getting an issue here. Oh, there it goes. It's... See, I told you it would take a while for it to think, so um, when it pulls that little box up, you're doing a lot of calculations. So now we'll look at the far field plots here, give it a second to finish its, its thinking here um, on 10 meters. Okay, so now we got this wild clock face here, and you, you see very high gain in this direction, right? 10 point 6 dB again. So 100 watt, 200 watt, 400 watt, 800 plus, almost almost 12, almost 1600 watts in that direction, right? And that elevation is what, uh, 60 degrees. So it's gonna be a relatively short skip, but you sure as heck are gonna be loud. If we look at this thing in 3D, if it brings it up, it's, it's kind of looks like an oyster shell almost. Uh, the way it, it comes in because of all the crazy lobes and um, all the weird directions it's going to fire. But that's, that's what you can do with this. So uh, there's several other, and we can get into doing Yagi's and those kind of things. So we'll do some more advanced stuff in the next presentation. Um, the, um, I'm looking at Ross to see what your question was here. I've uh, had trouble with the software. Must be missing something. I wish there was a simple system for the confusion. Uh, 
Yeah, the MR code plugs, if you think those are simple, boy, I'll tell you what, uh, come, come show me how they're simple because, man, I got problems with that. But the software itself, it's a little clunky, um, but if you play with it for a while, you can do that. I mean, you can do everything from making stacks of antennas. So if you want to do a three over three, you can do stacks. And we'll go through some of that in the next iteration of this. I wanted to get the basics in tonight so you can see how to draw a, a wire in, how to add your sources, um, how to build your ground system, how to do the basic calculations, those kind of things that are important to getting the basics down for this. Once you're into the basics, and if you go to the website um, uh, that I had on the presentation, let me pull that back up for you. If you go back to um, this slide here, bear with me just a second, I'll get there. This side here, this quick start guide, really, really good um, information on that, okay? That actually has um, a dynamite uh, primer for this, and I've learned a lot from that primer. It runs you through all the basics for that. So the quick start guide is very important. I would encourage you to take that and download it and have it while you're working with the, the software, okay? So um, that's pretty much what I have for you all tonight. Um, is there any other questions or anything I can answer? Um, again, we'll, we'll do this in probably another month. Uh, I'll let you guys play with the, the uh, software for about a month and we'll look at it and go from there and try to do a little more in depth and a little more advanced stuff uh, next month if that works. Um, so uh, if there's no further questions, that's the end of the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all stay well, stay safe. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, please check out the other videos um, on, on this uh, uh, YouTube channel. We'd love to have you subscribe and uh, hit the notification buttons. And uh, when we do live streams, which we're doing quite a few of them now, uh, you'll get notified of that. So come out and join us at YCARS. Um, we'd love to have you, and um, even if it's virtual. So everybody, 73, NJ4Z, I'm out.